So much work went into the studio. Right? Yeah. This used to be my shop. And then, of course, you started getting going with the uh, art and everything else. And it's just taken off. It's been so great for you. So we modified all of this and uh, changing it, which is great. And uh, you've got, you know, an art show coming up and uh, lots of stuff going on. But I think what's really interesting is that you're going to be starting a television show on Rogers. Mm. <laughs> now, I know you're nervous about that. I know they're interested in you doing it, but can you just go over with me a bit, like how often will it be, what, what happens? There? Yeah, you know, we're we're looking at doing a, a small pilot just to see how it goes, but for um, basically once a week, you know, um, the idea really is there's lots of things happening in this community, particularly yeah. in the artistic community, and there's lots of people doing things, so we want to get out there and have a look, talk to different artists, talk to different galleries, there's art events, there's all sorts of things, so, you know, I, I think it's not so much about teaching creativity but showcasing the creativity that's already here in London. One of the things about uh, you know being married to you especially after you got going in art. Do you love you, being married to I me do. by the way? <laughs> well I wouldn't have fixed all this up but this is the home for my smart car and my wood shop but anyway um, I think that the what I've learned uh, from watching you and, and doing the art is that there's such a, a vast as you just said um, artistic community out there uh, so I think it's really good I'm sure you'll want to talk to various artists there but what I've been interested in 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 going with you to some of these places are actually the motivations yeah. of why people paint um you know uh, why they got going or why some decided later on in life to get going some picked it up after doing something in school when they were younger and then life got busy with career and kids and all the other stuff but men and women both uh, they all have different um, motivations to it. Uh, have you discovered that same thing? Yeah, you know, I think um, if you're talking about my motivation, that's one thing. But if also in terms of other people, uh, other, other people's others. motivations, yeah, you know, and it it comes at all different levels. You're going to hate this analogy, but it's a hockey analogy a little bit. <laughs> Jane and hockey is just the worst. You know, Jane there's... plays hockey, by the way, just so you know, for a woman's team, done it for years. I have to live with it. Go ahead. Um, you know, there are professionals and the professional hockey players that spend their lives doing things and they really hone their craft and they yeah. spend hours and hours and they are amazing and it's wonderful. And London has lots of those kind of artists, which is which will, you know, over the next few weeks, we'll also explore. But there's a whole other folks like me in many ways. It's kind of they call them aspiring, emerging amateur artists. Mm. There, there's a lot of folks who just love visual art they love to be creative um, and it's kind of like the rec hockey players it's, it's really important to get out and get involved i think one of the things for me that's really important about being creative is you know as you, we're involved in the food bank mm -hmm. and 37 years. 37 years and it's really difficult for lots of people and basic needs food shelter all of those things are incredibly important and we're going through a really really difficult mm -hmm. time but those a lot of those things are about how we live to me art and being creative is and expressing your creativity or expressing your love for someone mm -hmm. through a creative motive that, like that's why we live and so the ability for those that have just and we all have it just the ability to create at whatever thing i think is just really really important because it is it's the stuff of life for sure so can i just ask you I, you know i knew you four five decades ago and you were always doodling. Anytime you're on the phone, you were always doodling. Anytime you're listening to a speaker, usually me, you get bored and you would start doodling <clears throat> and doing. But you, you, you had this yen uh, for art. Did that come from school? Um, I think where it I I think it's a little innate in terms of there's some family history. Yeah. But I I do also think it's. I think everybody has innate creativity, but it, we tend to get blocked. It's like mm. math. We think we can't do it or we shouldn't do it. Um, but I was in an atmosphere where that was encouraged. So then to take art in school was actually really important. It wasn't a bird course per se, but it was just kind of expressing something mm. that was already there. Um, I also loved art through school because it taught me history. There was lots yeah. of other things that kind of went around to it. And I think it was just... 
when you do something, you get better at it. Mm -hmm. And the more I doodled, the better I got. And I think it, it was just also a way for me to give presents to kind of express. It was just, yeah, I, I just loved doing it. It was just incredibly important. So part, you're going to then ask me about why kind of this emanation. And, and part of this emanation was I was, I was always doing those things, but I always required a fair bit of time. So work came along. Kids came along, Sudan, Sudan came band. along, all of yeah. those kind of things mm -hmm. came along. Um, and then I, I just think as the kids got older, uh, elder care. And then yeah. when I was no longer doing elder care, it was just, it became really important for me to not get sucked in by work, um, mm -hmm. to not get sucked in back into the family. And I think it's uh, family and all of those things are incredibly important, but the ability to hone and express and spend some time being creative was just was really important. Something changed in you though. It was a number of years ago, and I mean, you, uh, you know, after school life for you got so busy, amazing. Not just here, but around the world, all the different things that you did. Uh, but you painted during that time occasionally. You would come back from Sudan and you'd had some drawings, Draw, or, yeah. Yeah, that kind, that kind of stuff. Um, but I remember back in 2000, you put out an art show at the gallery at that particular time. Was that time. your birthday? That's my birthday. That was, I turned 50. Yeah. That's how I knew it was the year 2000. <laughs> but you uh, put on an art show at the, the gallery, and it was uh, of people in Sudan. But that was not a consistent thing. No. But now you have decided that that's what you want. And I think that came up a few years ago. But um, is the being the consistent thing now something that is a motive or you just feel now that you have the time to actually donate to it that you want to? I, I think it's a little bit of both. I think, um, you know, we're at the food bank, we talk a lot about there are task oriented people and there are people oriented mm -hmm. people. And, and we've got a really good blend of both, you know. Um, but there's there's a discipline people who do a little bit every day, get yeah. it done. And then there's people who don't do anything. And then all of a sudden it's a whirlwind of activity. Mm -hmm. And I was just, I was just one of those who yeah. was not terribly disciplined, you know, yeah. I, I didn't yeah, keep it. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, um, I understood if I, and it's not so much about getting better. It's you need to have a place and it's, as time goes on, you really understand that discipline, with regards to showing up is half of the battle when it comes to art. Um, it's not so much the end product per se, it's the process that you go through. So I think I think that became important. And so that the commitment to, if that's the end product that I want, these are some of the steps that yeah. I have to do to get there. And I still cram and I still, you know, aren't I'm not terribly disciplined, but I think when I set my mind to something, I get determined and then I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll figure out the steps to doing it. So. But you also uh, are associating with other quite talented people, all, all all in different ways. We'll get into some of those, I'm sure, as yeah. the show goes on. But I'm sure that's inspiring and helpful, yeah. developing technique and hearing other stories. Yeah, those. you know, I, I like art is, you know, for someone who wants to get explore their own creativity. I think it's important just to do it. But when they talk about things like intentional practice, I, I know that I didn't know very much. Yeah. You know, so. There, I have an art mentor, which yep. is great. You know, yeah. I had art teachers. You know, I can. There's workshops, or and just constantly practice, and then having people critique. I think that's incredibly important. Yeah. So I've I've enjoyed that part of it, but I think in the end, still the motivation is is also about it's. I mean, I struggled a little bit. Am I doing this for myself um, in terms of my creativity, which I think is important as you go through it. But I didn't want it to be about me, mm -hmm. and I think in the end, it still is a little bit about. I want to do these things and give them away or yeah. give them to others yeah. and, and particularly give do things of meaning for yeah. them and it's just another way to express a and i've been with you as you drop those paintings off yeah. to people in grief or a celebration or somebody has a favorite picture so you, you do that for them um but so you're going to have your own tv show you're going to do oh my goodness, a yeah. pilot <laughs> yeah. you're going to do a few i'm sure yeah. it's going to be great thank you um I will be helping you with it. I'll be behind the scenes in the camera. This is the last people will probably see me. Um, but the reality is, is it's going to be every week for you. And it's going to go month after month after month. Uh, now, what's good about that is I think you've got a lot of creativity, which is good. But it's a huge community out there, too, of artists. And you're going to explore that. So a lot of some of that will happen here, maybe in your studio or talk about techniques. But some we've already done some shooting of some people out doing plein air. 
outside. So you're gonna do remote work as yeah. well. That's your plan, right? Yeah, you know, we're gonna, I'm, I'm, to me, there's four main aspects I think that, that I see in terms of exploring London's creative side. And I think, um, I think talking to artists is important. And we're, we're actually going to start to a couple of talking to a couple of the artists that are closest to me, yeah. my mentor and my, I, my high school art teacher. We, That's that, amazing. I know, like, isn't how that many amazing? years ago was that? Like, oh, I don't know. 50 years ago, whatever. That's whatever. amazing. Um, you know, so I think, I think it's important to talk to people, both their motivation, but their creative process. I, I think, you know, I want to showcase some events and some things yeah. that are happening within the city. Um, like up with art happened. Um, yeah. You know, there's, um, the uh the hospital foundation puts on a, yeah. an, an art yeah. auction every year as well so there and, and of course there was a plein air event which was um down in mortley village so there's yeah. events then there's groups that actually are involved in art um you know we've got tap we've got um, the art project yeah. you know there's arts for all kids which is trying to give art exposure to kids who can't afford it so mm -hmm. i think i think it's important to talk to them as well um and then finally there's a lot of hidden things about London, I think that are, could be explored, like just whether it's historically, whether it's with the galleries, we've got a London Regional Art Gallery, we've got a great history with regards to some great painters, mm -hmm. you know, talking about some of the meaning behind art, um, you know, and sometimes it's controversial, um, you know, when it's the National Gallery spending millions of dollars on a mm -hmm. painting that mm -hmm. we don't necessarily like. Um, you know, or whether it's it's governments pulling back funding from arts at the education mm -hmm. level. I think there's some issues and there's some things that are, are, are good to kind of touch upon. So I see all of that. I think the thing mm -hmm. that scares me a little bit is I'm a visual communicator. I'm not a verbal Very communicator. Well, yeah. um, and so going to, I'm, but I'm curious, so I'm really happy to talk to folks about it. Yeah. But the ability to pull out some of these deeper meanings from people I'm I'm yeah. excited to try to explore but a little nervous about it so two things then one is is there hope then that you'll drop hockey and really go into this <laughs> full time is that going to happen well Probably. maybe I should start paint a painting series on hockey yeah. oh, that would no. be something yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the second thing is I'm going to go get myself a cup of tea and and then uh, i'm going to come back but i'd like to talk to you a bit about the studio what it is that you're hoping to do uh, yeah. that way as well is that good but i think this gives people a good introduction you got a show starts in the fall yep. september i think yep. it's great of rogers to do that like oh, for sure you know rogers is wonderful that way but it's community tv and people will get to see the community not just you which i think is great so i'll be back in about five or ten minutes so I'll come back to my old home and see how you've changed it. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll get to painting a little bit, and then okay. we can we can talk about it. So that's, that's great. Great. I look forward to it. Okay, I've had my tea. Here's Jane's scooter. So when it's here, she's in. So that's good. This is her studio, which is awesome. It used to be my place, but it's now hers. And she's got all her stuff set up in there. So let's go see what she's doing. Come on in. So I'm back. I had my tea. So, you're obviously up to something. Well, I'm just, I'm, I don't know. Do you recognize that, Glenn? Um, I'm well, I'm colorblind, so that's part of the problem. It looks like my hair used to. What, what is that? Well, it's the mid stage, so it's still not. It's, um, it's not perfect. But this is from Ca this is from the dunes in Cape May. In Cape May, yeah. So down in New Jersey. Yeah, so this we is going to be dunes. Yep. These are obviously some of the, the brush and the scrush. Uh, sky and there'll be some there'll be obviously the sound that's yep. the, the water right there so well, yeah that's great yeah so i see you got your camera up there that's going to help you to I, get it some of the show as well which is good when you need it yeah um so that's actually the pit it's the gone picture. black but that's yeah. what the picture the, in terms of working from, and then so. what do you have going here uh this is drawing but um so again mid-stage again um this is from um the Rideau. So it's another trip we were on as yeah. well, you know, and, and again, these are acrylic and I'm just trying to work on f uh, freedom. How should I say freedom of expression? Yeah. I, I find I tend to get a little bit detailed and a little bit whatever. So I'm just trying to let it all go. So that's the, that's the Rideau. So this used to be my smart cars home. Yeah. Okay. And now this is your studio, but how did, what made you choose to decide to organize it this way? Well, we actually, so thank you very much to Glenn, to Jamie, and to um, Olga Guthrie. Um, you know, this, well, Olga, Olga gave you a bunch of this yeah, stuff. Yeah, she right? did, which is amazing. So, yeah. you know, whether it's a table or storage, um, 
you know, if you were to come into the studio a few months ago, it's a complete mess. I remember. Everything is everywhere. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Jamie, Jamie Jardine, who's one of, who's I consider to be my art mentor. Um, awesome you know, guy. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he came in and we talked about areas of um, work and busyness and how to do things, but lighting and a number of different things. So we were able to kind of, you know, just basically plan this. So painting happens here, palettes and ideas are here. Um, you know, this is where if I want to work on this, I can, but I'm actually just, I'm prepping some boards. Um, and when you say prep, what do you mean? Um, so oftentimes if you don't, you can buy prep prepared panels, but sometimes you get wood yeah. um, and you need to, you need to gesso it and sand it and prepare I it to see, actually. Yeah. Take so okay. gesso is a coating. Uh, just so it's, yeah, it's kind of like a coating. It's um, this is gesso here, is it? Yeah, so that's that's correct. That's yeah. gesso there. So, okay. yeah, so. that's good. Yeah. And then yeah. what about this thing over here? Oh, I know well, it's really heavy. It's but. incredibly <laughs> heavy. Yeah, um, it was quite a little bit of a chore getting it done, but it was it's amazing. Yeah. So right now it's got some finished paintings in it that are dry. It's got some canvases that are getting prepping. It's got um, some mat board. Um, and yeah. then it's got some other paintings. I, I, I tend to start painting sometimes and I'm, and then I'm always not sure when to stop. Mm. So I've got some paintings there. I, I need to just work on and finish up a little bit. So, so I, I get up in the morning early and I write and yeah. I kind of like an atmosphere around that. That's why I get up before everybody else does. But are you comfortable here in this place? I know it's, it's winterized. The heater is up there, all that stuff. But are you comfortable in it or do you still think you're trying to find your way here? I, I think I'm still trying to find my way a little bit. There's some things still in here that need to move out. But I, I'm, I'm, com I'm really comfortable in it now. I think it's got, you know, a lot of natural light. Um, there is, you know, tea and coffee. You know, there's yeah. some... My biggest problem is sometimes it's knowing when to stop and... And you remember you got a husband inside. Yeah, you're supposed it's to be coming true. And, to see. That's and, right. You know, and and stopping sometimes. Yeah. You know, we tend to overwork things. So the ability just to sit and have a coffee and tea, I'm, I'm great. And you know, we've got a great backyard, and you know, there's skunks and yeah, bunnies right. Lots of and animals. chipmunks. Yeah. I saw a pos an opossum the other day. It's, yeah. it's like it's amazing. So that's, that's great. Now, part of what's going to be great about this show is that. Everybody's studio, I presume, kind of reflects them. I think yours is still in the making, yeah. right? You're still yeah. figuring out how, where you want to put everything, how you want to do it. But you're going to go see some established artists who've got beautiful studios. And then you're going to see others who probably have studios in their home yeah. uh, or, or whatever. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see how people, just like they would with the home in general, but uh, you're going to get to see and, and you might learn some things as to how they did that. Yeah. So one of the artists we're going to go visit is a gentleman by the name of Sean Cucci, who's an indigenous. Yes, artist. I know. Sean. Um, yeah. yeah. But he actually works on his kitchen table like he works. Interesting. Yeah, he yeah. works inside. So, you know, they oftentimes you would you might talk to an artist and particularly when you're getting into it, you're basically going, what do I need? What paintbrushes? What's exactly? And, the, you know, the best answer is always the, it's the one you have with you. Yeah. So it's everybody works within the confines with whatever